Hey everybody, um, I thought I'd walk you guys through the, the, I guess the graphic organizer would be a good way to call it, um, for factory. And there's a bunch of different things here. So again, these are some <coughs> of the patterns that you may have seen as we've gone through things. Um, the two that you should probably focus on the most if you're kind of cutting down to the wire would be this one here. This way is always going to work. And then this one over here you're going to need to know. Um, this one over here, the difference of squares and the trinomial one are going to be kind of special cases. So again, those would be two that you don't necessarily need to focus on, but if you can see it, it can save you a whole bunch of a lot of time. A whole bunch of a lot of time. That's a really nice way to say it. First thing that you always need to do is look for a greatest common factor. If you can factor something, the greatest common factor out of these, it's going to save yourself um, a lot of time. I'll point things out as we go. But the first thing you want to do is look through that. Um, I'm going to zoom in on each of these as we go. So first of all, starting over here on the left, the difference of perfect squares. Um, this is where you have just two terms squared. And the first thing that should tip you off is A, notice it's a binomial. Okay, Difference, remember, means subtract or minus. And perfect square or squares is where, like here, you say, okay, wait a second, that's x squared. Oh, look, this is eight squared. And when you do this, the cool part is, is that you get a part that drops. Um, the difference of perfect squares is going to equal, in this case, x minus eight and x plus eight. We had done this actually on the Friday before, so this is just more of a reminder here. Um, because if I multiply this out, and you can put this on the back if you want, or you can just watch it. So if we multiply this out, we end up getting middle terms that drop. So however you want to set this up. Um, so again, when I multiply this, I get 8x. And when I do this, I get negative 8x. And so that sums out to become... So you don't actually get a middle term, and that's why that works. A um, couple other examples quick. So let's say, the one thing is, is, let's say if I've got something where it's like, say, 4x squared minus 111 or something like that. If you're not sure if this is a perfect square, like here you can see 4, most people know, is 2 squared. If you need to check it, take the square root of the number. So like a negative 111 gives me a number that's like 10 point something, and probably like 10.6. So that means it's not a perfect square. So that means you can't do this. Likewise, if it was adding it, you couldn't do it. But let's say if I had negative 121, if you're not sure, take the square root of 121, you're like, oh, that's 11. So this means that this would be 11 squared. So then we could break this down into 2x plus 11, 2x minus 11. Okay. Second one. Now, there are two different types of trinomials. This one, the special case is where here, I've got a 1 out front. Because what ends up happening then is like for this one then, my product is negative 42, and my sum is going to be negative 1. So again, same thing. Look for your factor pairs. So I got um, the larger number is going to be negative since my sum is negative. And as I go through this, you'll see something kind of neat here. 5 doesn't work. 4 doesn't work. 6 does. So that's what I want. Now, if you were to do the box here, or if you were to do factoring by grouping, notice I would have x squared. The negative x gets split, split up into 6x and negative 7x. But when I factor out my greatest common factors here, I pull out an x, I pull out a negative 7, my leftovers are x and 6. Notice those are the exact same numbers that I both I split the term into. Okay. Those are the same things as right there. And so the shortcut here would be the fact that if you have a leading coefficient of 1, whatever you find here as your factors are just going to turn into those there. So on the second one down here, if I factor out, now again, look, GCF, 2, 20, 50. I can pull a 2 out. So again, product of 25 sum of 10. So I've only got two options here. I've got 1 and 25, and I have 5 and 
5. So those would be the ones that I would use. You can just go straight. Now, any greatest common factor is still going to stay out on the side, but you're going to get this. And then you're done. If you do the box, you'll get the same thing. If you're more comfortable, do, I mean, doing the fact, you know, splitting the middle term and doing all that, please do that. But again, these first two are kind of just some shortcuts that hopefully will save you some time. Um, this is the third one. I just realized I shrunk it and locked it. My apologies. So it's down here. So this is the standard one. Again, ask yourself, is there a GCF? Remember, look to the smallest term for the GCF. So in this case, you're going to look at the 6. Um, oops. So if I look at the 6 here, the factors of 6 are 1 and 6, 2 and 3. So say, can I divide a 6 into the 30 and the 27? The answer is no, so we're going to ignore that one. And then say, okay, well, wait a second, what about the 3? Yeah, I can do the 3, so I'm going to factor out the 3 then. Oops, magic pen, it's not going to go away. So then I'm going to factor out the 3, and I'll get 10x squared minus 9x plus 2. And then, now notice what will end up happening. The original product, I would go 30 times 6. I'd get 180. There's a lot of numbers that multiply up to 180. If I factor out the GCF, now my product is 10 times 2, which is 20. It's the first term times the last term, remember. My sum is going to be negative 9. And so now instead of trying to find pairs out of 180, I'm only finding pairs out of 20. And that's going to be much easier to deal with. Now, it's positive, but my sum's negative. So both numbers are going to be negative here. So there's the pair. So I'm going to split this middle term. You're breaking this up into 10x squared minus 4x minus 5x plus 2. If you want to do the box, you can do that. If you want to split the middle term, you can do that. So 10x squared, negative 4x, negative 5x, and 2. So again, if we're doing it this way, I've got 3. What can I factor? And, and again, this method is just you're breaking the two terms into two different rows. Okay, so it's just basically the same thing. You're just organizing it differently. So here, what can I, what's the greatest common factor between the 10x squared and the 4x? Oh, wait, that's 2x. What's left over? 5x minus 2. What's the greatest common factor here? Oh, yeah, it's still 2x. What's left over? 5x minus 2. <gasps> Shock of shocks. Now up here, you can factor out a negative 1 because, again, remember, you want to have the same leftovers here. So either way, then, your final answer is going to be 3 times, and then I've got the 5x minus 2 out front, and the 2x minus 1 on the inside. And then grouping. This is the one that we did first. However, this is the one that still throws people because they're like, four terms? What am I supposed to do? Well, let's help people remember, if you're grouping it, you've got to have two in each. So that'd be full, you know, that. Or... How many spots do you have in your box? Let's make that a little bit bigger. Okay. So then again, 2a cubed minus a squared b, 10a minus 5b. What's in common between these two terms? Oh, look, I can take out an a squared. Leftovers, 2a minus b. You can do the same thing here. Oh, look, I can take out an a squared. I get 2a minus b. Plus, left out here, I can take out a 5. I get 2a minus b. 5, 2a minus b. And then you pull out the common term, or you pull it down here. Okay? So that's the basics there. Hopefully that helps. I would have that sheet with you as you're going through and practicing your factoring so you can refer back to it. Okay? It's not something to be hid or put away. Don't be that person. All right. Talk to you soon.